1230 right here on Love 101 FM, the family station. And it's now time for MPIAW. Motivation, prayer, instruction, action, and worship. Joining me at this time is no stranger to Love 101. His name is Pastor Ricardo Taylor of the Changing Your World Ministry. He's an anointed man of God. And of course, he's going to tell us a little bit more about himself in a little while. But let me welcome, but let me welcome my friends listening on the FM band. Those joining us via Facebook and YouTube, of course, it's Love 101 FM, the family station. And we're so glad to have you this morning. Yes, you do. With so much peace and joy. God is truly amazing, my friends. You're amazing. Good morning to you, Pastor Ricardo Taylor. Good morning, sir. How are you doing this morning? So good to have you. Good morning, good morning, Rasheen, and good morning to your listeners. I am blessed. You hear me clearly? Yes, I, I am hearing you clearly. And um, just I was just trying to test something out a while ago, but I'm I'm actually hearing you clearly. And we're so glad to have you this morning. I know uh, it, it's it's normally short notice. I don't know why you know I always wait until you know the last minute or in the nick of time to reach out to my guests at times, but. You know, I remember it was on Friday, it was Friday, yesterday, uh, or technically the day before, because we're now in Sunday, so it wouldn't be Saturday, so it would be on Friday. I remember I was trying to say, God, who should I bring on the program for, for this weekend? And um, your name came into my thought, and I tried you, didn't get through to you, so I said, you know what, I'm going to still try and see if I can connect with this man of God, because I know that I don't go by any other instructions if god says it's pastor carter taylor then i said you know what it's gonna be him so i called you this this afternoon and you know of course you answer to the call and i'm extremely grateful and i'm happy to have you this morning to be sharing inside mpiaw motivation prayer instruction action and worship so just before you go into this morning's word motivational word just tell the listeners who is pastor ricardo taylor and then you just go straight ahead. Yes, good night again. Well, Pastor Ricardo Taylor is the pastor of Changing the World Ministry. I'm married to Natoya Taylor. I am blessed to be a pastor. I think it's one of the hardest questions anybody can ask me. You can ask me about Jesus and I'll go on and on and on. But um, I'm passionate about God, passionate about the things of God. And whenever I get an opportunity to share the word of God, I am always available and ready. So this morning, I am ready to share All right. what God has laid on my heart to say to his wonderful people Amen. who have stayed up to listen to what God is saying at this time. Amen. Definitely. I like that. I like that. So just like the starter, um, when you're doing a race, um, ready, set, go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. So I want to encourage us this morning from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, really focusing on verse 19. I'm not going to read it for, because of time, but let me just read verse 19. It reads, if for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. I'm reading the NRSV. The Amplified said, only in this life we have hope in Christ Jesus will be of men most miserable. Now, I was having a conversation with someone recently who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And the doctors literally sent her home to die because they said there's nothing else that they can do. And in the conversation with the person, she was saying that, you know, she wants her body to be cremated because it's not that she don't believe in miracles, but we just have a time when we say, Lord, just have your way. And so she said, you know, I want to be cremated. And from then we have been having conversations 
with different persons as to what they want to happen to them when they're dead. Whether they want to be cremated or whether they want to have a big splash or, you know, different requests. Now, in our culture, this is not something that we do. I can imagine some persons are saying, why did we even bother to stay from the city because this man is talking about death? Yeah? But death is not something, a conversation that we like to have. And this is why most persons in Jamaica don't have a will, because we believe that we come to live forever. Even though the Bible makes it very clear that it is appointed and the men wants to die. We don't have these discussions. But I believe no more than ever because of what is happening around us, persons are more open to having discussions like this. Death, what happens to us after death, is there life after death? And even Christians are now questioning their, their belief as it relates to death. They say, we get getting passionate now, my God, as it relates to death. What happens to me when I die? Uh, where do I go after death? And it's the same conversation they were having in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. They were having a conversation about what happens to us after death. And Paul, who started this church in Corinth, who laid the foundation of what happens to us after death, that when you die, and it is Paul who said to be absent from this body is to be present with God, was now getting news that there were persons in the Corinthians church who don't believe in the resurrection. And so Paul, in his letter, was rebuking them for their unbelief. And he said to them, let me, let me get into, into 1 Corinthians. He said to them that if Christ is not risen from the dead, then our preaching is in vain. And this whole salvation thing is an absolute waste of time because our salvation is hinged, oh my God, on the resurrection of the dead. If there's no resurrection of the dead, then the preaching is in vain. And so it is within this context that Paul wrote them the letter to rebuke them for their unbelief in the resurrection of the dead. And then he went on to say in verse 19, which we are focusing on, if only in this life, this life that we are now living in, we have hope in Christ Jesus, we will have made most miserable. He's not saying that we should not have hope in Christ Jesus. We're getting back to the resurrection and the death. He's not suggesting that we should not have hope in Christ Jesus in this world. But he's, he's saying to us, if your hope is only fixed for this world, if your belief in Christ Jesus is just in this world, you are going to be at men most miserable. Why is that? This world is filled with disappointments. This world is filled with pain. This world is filled with sorrow. It's filled with brokenness. And he said, if the only place you have hope in Christ Jesus is for this world, and you don't believe that there is life after death, you are going to be a miserable Christian. You are going to be a broken Christian. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, brothers and sisters listening and watching us on the different platforms, that there is no life after death? That after you have suffered in this life, after you go through different sicknesses, after you go through different pain and disappointment, only to die and not have an expectation of a better life. This is why as believers, our hope is built on nothing less. Our hope is not built on in this world. This is what Jesus Christ said to his disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. So in spite of what you are going through, in spite of your disappointments, in spite of all the trauma that we are suffering, my brothers and sisters, because we are fixed our hope in Christ Jesus, we are not grieving like those who are hopeless, but we grieve knowing that one day, one day, whatever that day is, there is a hope that I will be transformed or translated from this life into another life. And this is why, as a believer, I am going through what I'm going through, and I'm not giving up on Jesus. This is why, as a believer, in spite of the suffering and pain, you're holding on to the unchanging hand of Jesus. Why is that, Pastor Taylor? Because you understand that that there's a better life after this life. This is not final. 
Death is, and this is why Paul said this in First Corinthians. He said, "Oh, death, where is thy sting? My God, I'm getting excited. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Yes, before the coming of Jesus Christ, we were hopeless. But oh my God, when Jesus Christ came, He gave us life, and He gave us life eternally. So He said to them in the Corinthians church, "If your hope is only in this life." And this is why the Bible reminds us not to lay up for ourselves treasures on the earth. You have this big house, you have 20 cars, you have all the money in the bank. He said, I put the profit of to gain this whole world and lose his soul. I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine, and he said, a very well known artist who died from cancer made this statement. He said, if all the money I have, could have prevented or healed me of cancer, I would have been healed. But the money was not sufficient. I want you to listen to me. In spite of what you're going through, in spite of where you are right now, and you might be saying, God, why me I go through all of this? You might be saying, God, why me? Why this? Why that? And many of us say these things because our hope is fixed in this world. We don't understand that it is appointed unto us to leave this world. And this is what Paul said to be absent from this body. Yes, at some point we will be absent from this body, whether it is death or the rapture of the church. But as a believer, our hope is not in this world. And this is why we're not worried about the virus and we're not worried about what is happening around us. Because we know, say, let me talk to Jamaica, that we know, say, there's a better life awaiting us. Oh, what a day that will be when we are translated from this body and we are placed like Lazarus in that story. With Lazarus and that man who had everything. The Bible said he died sumptuously. He had every single thing. But he did not store up for himself treasures in heaven. Let me say to us this morning, all of us this morning, who are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But the only thing we're focusing, we have become so earthly. The Bible says, love not the world, nor the things of the world. But they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. I'm not saying that as we're in the earth, we should not occupy until he come. We should not have possession. But these things should not be our focus. This should not be the thing that, that, that holds me together. My hope must be in Christ. The house can catch a fire. The car can crash. And the bank can shut down with your money. But when you store up for yourself treasures in heaven, my brothers and my sisters, nothing can touch it, nothing can move it. And so Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians church, reminded them that, yes, there's a resurrection of the dead. But he also reminded them that, listen, don't matter just open this world. Because preacher man, preacher woman, evangelist, bishop, this world is filled with too much disappointment. You need to fix your gaze. Oh, my God. And the heavenly. I want to challenge you this morning, in spite of what you're going through. There are some of you listening to me who you are worried. You sit and you watch the news and you are worried because of what you're seeing, the death, your, your deaths, you're worried. Oh my God. But when your hope is in Jesus Christ, you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is not the end. It's only the beginning. And so we're having this frank conversation, Brother Douglas, about death. Because persons have now realized we have close family members, friends, who are strong, healthy people. And because of this virus, there are no diseases. And so this thought of us being invincible and untouchable because we healthy, we understand now that we are mere mortals and anything can happen to us. And so what we need to start doing now, brothers and sisters, is start if we have not, 
to get it right with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Paul was saying to them that yes, there's a resurrection of the dead. Yes, there's a resurrection of the dead because if there's no resurrection of the dead, then our preach is in, vain, is in vain. Then he went on to say that we should not only have hope in this life, but what is most important in all of this is that no man can enter eternity or eternal rest with Christ until and unless they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I want to ask someone this morning who are watching, who is watching us, have you accepted Jesus? Have you said yes to Jesus? Have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? And I want to say to that Christian who's struggling in their faith, the country people say, you can't slap me right. This is the time that we get serious with Jesus Christ. This is the time that we get serious about our Christian walk with Jesus because we understand, brothers and sisters, it is not the rapture of the church, the Bible. So when you see these, see these things, look up your redemption right now. We see all the signs and the things, the earthquake and the things that are happening around us, which are, which are evidence that we are living in the last days. And so I want to say to us, if you have not accepted Jesus, accept him now. Right now, don't wait until next week or tomorrow. Hallelujah. And it is very simple. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you are saved. The thief on the cross just acknowledged that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Jesus said to him, today will be with me in paradise. That's all you have to do right now as you listen to this. Wherever you are, you're sitting at home listening to this program because you're unable to sleep. You are in the jail, in prison, wherever you are listening to this program, God would have it that you are hearing this because he said, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. You're not listening by accident. You're listening because God is saying to you, it's not his will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. And so right there, that person is going through depression. You're thinking about committing suicide. You're thinking about doing something crazy. Right there, as you are listening to this program, just call upon Jesus. That Christian is wavering in their faith. A matter of fact, you're somewhere that you should not be right now this morning as a believer. You, are, you should not be where you are. But you can make it right with Jesus Christ right now, wherever you are. So if the church should be raptured, or if you should meet your maker, you will be in the arms of God. The story reminds us, Brother Douglas, that the rich man had every single thing. He had all the fancy clothes. He has the latest car, live uptown. He's invited to all the name brand parties. He's well known. But he did not know Jesus. He did not take the time out to accept Jesus. He went and he got his degree, got his master's, got his doctorate, everything. Well-known, prominent man. But he did not know Jesus. The story also told us about a man at his gate who had nothing. He had nothing in the earth, earthly thing, earthly possession. But he had Jesus. And you know what happened? Both of them died. And the Bible said the rich man was taken into hell. And Lazarus was taken in Abraham's bosom. He had nothing, but he had Christ. And that is the most important thing to have. I believe in prosperity. I believe in having wealth and having all of this. But having Jesus is far more important than having money. Because if we have money and not have Christ, we're lost. If we have fame and fortune and not, and not enough and don't have Christ, we're lost. And so this morning, there is a resurrection of the dead. And every dead will be raised, some to judgment, to go back, to go to hell, and others to be with the Lord. So this morning, I encourage you to make that decision. I am not an old man. I am a young boy, young Jamaican people say young green boy. And I mention that because people have it to say only old people turn Christian. And you know why I'm from Christian to get all this foolishness that. The young 
trendy as them call it. If all of the fans were really nice clothes and all of them something. It's not an inch of, of, of foolishness that persons talk about. You can be saved, sanctified, be holy, live righteous, and still smell good and look good. But we just decide that a Jesus we are saved. Because there's nothing in the world, but let me rephrase that. The things in the world are temporary. I've never seen a man being buried with his mercy in his bed. I've never seen a man being buried with his house. And there are some Christians, you can't have a prayer again because of your job. You can't fast again because of your job. You become so busy. The blessings that you have received have now become an hindrance to you worshiping God. I want you to hear that. The very things that God has blessed you with has now become a hindrance to you serving him and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So Paul said to them in Corinth, your hope in Christ Jesus cannot just be for this world. Or else you have a miserable. A lot of Christians, they're miserable. They now get the things where they're more miserable. But the Bible reminds us as I turn over to Mr. Douglas, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Before I turn over, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are many of us who are worried. There are many of us who are burdened. There are many of us who don't even know what is going to happen. We don't know anything about the future. We are afraid of death because we don't know what happens to us after we die. But your word reminds us that you have gone to prepare a place for us and you're coming back to receive us unto yourself. That where you are, there we will be also. I pray tonight that every backslider that is listening to this program will come back home. That every sinner right now, wherever they are listening to this program, that they will accept you as their Lord and Savior. So whenever they die, or if the church is raptured, they too will be with you in paradise. We thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. It's all about God's excess love. His love is unconditional. It's not conditional, but unconditional. The word of God said, for God so loved the world. There was no condition. It said, for God so loved the world, loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You heard that powerful motivational word from the man of God. If your hope is in this world, if our hope was just in this world, we would be men most miserable. If your hope is built on Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let us not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we should let our requests be made known unto God. And this is what I love about God. When we give God our requests, when we cast all our cares upon the Lord, he said in verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4, And the peace of God which surpass all understanding. You don't, you don't have to understand what's happening in the world right now. Just fix your hope on Jesus Christ. Put your trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, and they shall not be removed, but they shall abide forever. We really want to welcome you if you've just joined in. Welcome to MPIAW right here on Love 101 FM, the family station. Our guest this morning is Pastor Ricardo Taylor of the Changing Your World Ministry. And I know that God wants to bless you tremendously this morning. He loves you too much. Not too much. The love that God has for you, it's unmeasurable. We're getting ready to pray this morning for God's divine favor. 
We're getting ready to put your requests before the Lord. Really want to thank those who reached out on WhatsApp. 876-997-3125. That's the number to send in your prayer requests. All right, so somebody said, please continue to lift up my daughter uh, in prayer. She's going in to do chemo. Praying for a complete healing. Yeah. Yes, you. My friend over there in Mandeville, blessings to you. Jesus Christ. Good morning, Brother Roshin. I am requesting prayer for my son in law, mother, who is in the hospital in a serious condition in the USA, Atlanta, Georgia. We are asking for prayer for her that the Lord will help her and heal her. So thank you very much for prayer. All right, not a problem, my friend. Jesus Christ is Lord. That at the name Every knee will bow. Saying good morning to you, Alvarine over there in Kingston. The Carmen from Uriton. She's saying good night, Pastor. Please pray for my daughter who's struggling to get her stay in the United Kingdom. For many years now, pray for a breakthrough for her. Carmen from uh, St. Catherine. Marcia Bennett from St. Thomas. She's praying for strength in the Lord. Another one says, good morning, Roshane. Of all is well with you and the family. Please, I'm asking the man of God to pray for my stomach. It's hurting last week when the doctor went to the doctor, but it still hurts. Another one says, good morning. Pray for the Lord who continue to provide a company for me and give me fresh anointing. Sister Pearl, God bless you, Sister Pearl. Who else is here? Good night. Please, I am asking prayer for my daughter. Who just keeps swelling and swelling and doctors cannot tell what's going on with her. And it's really heart-wrenching to see her <clears throat> going through this in her young life. And uh, there's no one can tell her no cure. And of course, they said it's a liver disease, but they can't tell you what caused it. And they don't have a treatment for it. And she just keeps swelling. And now mm -hmm. her face is all breaking out. Oh. You know, it's really painful to see her. It's just a little child and she's so swollen. You know, tiny person, but I should say, but now she's so swollen. I'm asking for prayer for her and for my families. I need prayer too for my feet. Thank you for praying and God bless you, Brother Roshan. God bless you too. Man of God. God, thank God bless you. Thank you. All right. Blessings. Thanks for that voice note. We'll definitely pray for you and your daughter. This one says, good night, Brother Rasheen pa and Pastor. I'm asking for prayer for my family. I have a swollen knee, and I know God is able. Sister Andreen. Another one says, good night. This one says, good night, Brother Rasheen. I'm asking for prayer, having a tingling all over my body, also itching. I know that with God, all things are possible. Also, a stronger, I need to be a stronger Christian on my journey thank you lord uh yes 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 another one says roshane uh, bless you man of god blessings um to you pastor giving god thanks i'm asking the lord to take away sickness and disease poverty stress and fear lydia grapine from portland is saying good morning man of god i'm asking you to pray for restoration of sight in the left eye and for healing from pains in the back and joints another one says i'm asking for prayer myself my body is ne i'm nervous uh my nerve body is okay not sure what that person is saying i'm also asking for special prayers for the rest of the family and my church family at saint peter's anglican marva from sandy river Please pray for me. Left hand is giving me a hard time. This one says, Brother Roshane, can you please pray for me and my family, Sister Jones? Another one says, good morning to you and the guest. 
Please pray for me. I need a job. I am Jeanette. Wow. So this one says, good morning, Roshan. This is not for you. Okay, not for airplay. All right. Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. I know that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, so we'll definitely pray for your daughter. This one says, I am blessed. So there is a blessing with my name written on it. I'm still waiting for my miracle of healing. Please pray for me. My name is Grace Campbell. Gloria Douglas, she's saying, good morning, Roshane. I'm believing God this morning for my breakthrough and deliverance. And I'm waiting for my companion in Jesus' mighty name. Another one says, good night. I'm requesting prayer for my brother, Patrick. Not well as uh, the COVID virus and in the hospital. All right. So we're praying for those who are in the hospital who are struggling with COVID-19 at this time. We're praying for their speedy recovery and that there will be no more deaths as it relates to COVID-19. Of course, I'm uh, not going to call this person's name, but this person was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer in the right breast. However, I started chemo on Friday. In spite of the situation, I will proudly stand boldly and tell the devil he's a loser and a liar. I am requesting prayer because I know nothing is impossible for God. I'm requesting prayer for protection with the diagnose, protection with the diagnosis. A family member from my household is a frontline worker in the health field. Got COVID. I really need prayer for God's protection from both sickness god bless you all thank you i'm praying but i still need prayer bless you my sister for reaching out she wants to keep her name confidential and we understand this one says please pray for prescott prescott graham um in negril he has covid a very weak please pray for him to be delivered from this deadly virus another one says Good morning, Love 101. This is Tabita Mighty asking for prayer this morning. I'm having a terrible allergy problem in my body acting up now, and I'm asking for prayer to be healed in Jesus' name. All right, so we're seeing a lot of requests here. Uh, they're still coming in, uh, numerous to go through all of them. But the, the requests, they continue to come in. Another one here from my sister over there in the UK. She says, good morning, Roshane. This is not a prayer request of such. Um, thanksgiving to God. Yes, I like that. Thank God for healing my sister Maureen and her husband in Williamsfield, um, Westmoreland. Also, who, who was tested positive for COVID and for keeping the rest of the family safe. Giving God thanks for Love 101 that wake me up on a Sunday morning to the glory of God. Thank you, Sister Pam over there in the UK. Thank you so much, Sister Pam, for reaching out. Thank you for those who would have sent in your request. We're seeing them all, not able to read all of your requests on air. Uh, this one says, good night, good night, good night. Um, please pray for my stomach, not feeling well. I can't sleep. And there's a lump in my left feet. The side also pleads. Remember, my four boys in Jamaica, I need a breakthrough. So we're seeing all your messages coming in. And of course, the man of God will be praying at this time. But just before he prays, let's take two voice notes. Let's start with this one. Good morning, brother Russian. I'm requesting prayer for my family, especially my two sons. I'm asking for prayer over my business, over the life of my six children. Russian, I also need some prayer. This is Jennifer from White I'm asking you to bless my business. Pray for me that God will continue to guide and open his way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's right, my friend. We agree with your prayer. You just prayed, you know, as amen. simple as it amen. is. It's a very short prayer, but we God heard your cry, my sister, and we agree 
in Jesus' name. Let's take the final voice note here. Good night, Brother Roshan. How are you, sir? God bless you for the good work you are doing. I have pains in my right hand, in the, especially in the finger. And I'm supposed to be at church tomorrow to play the keyboard. Mm -hmm. God, you know that I have to use this hand. So I have arthritis in these fingers and also in my back. But thank God the back is not bad. Because mm -hmm. I request prayer more than once and have groups who pray for me. So I give God the glory. Because the doctor said, the back arthritis can cripple me. But in the name of Jesus, I come against it. So Amen. I'm asking for the prayer for my right hand. And I must go to church and pray. Play the keyboard to do it the service. God bless you. God bless you too, my sister. And thanks for reaching out. Thanks for those who... Uh, still sending your messages. You can keep those messages coming in on WhatsApp, 876-997-3125. That's 876-997-3125. Of course, we're going to make way now for Pastor Ricardo Taylor to pray over your requests as you continue to send them in. You can send them on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you are listening from, whoever you are. Of course, this is Love 101, located right here in the beautiful city of Kingston, Jamaica. And, of course, we welcome you all to send in those prayer requests. We want to thank those on Facebook and those on YouTube. And, of course, those listening on the FM band on the different platforms. Pastor Ricardo Taylor, over to you, sir. It is done. Let us believe that if I descend that effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. You hear me clearly? Yes, Amen. yes, yes. I'm hearing it clear. Go the ahead. The fervent prayer for righteous man avail it much. The Bible said that when we pray, we should believe that we have received what we have prayed for and we shall have it. With man or men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe. So tonight, if you believe that God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask for a thing, there is nothing too hard for God to do. And when God, when the angel appeared to Mary and told her that she would have a child, and she said, oh, would this be seen I know it not a man? The angel told her that with God, this is possible. Your cancer situation, your job situation, whatever witchcraft, whatever situation you are faced with, God can and God will turn that situation around if you believe. And so as we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we place these prayer requests before you. Those overseas and those in Jamaica who are faced with different challenges, the enemy is telling some of them that it will never change. But tonight we believe your report, a report which says that all things are possible to them that believe. I speak to that issue now. I say, woman, be healed. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that arthritis, that cancer. I rebuke, mighty God, that seizure problem. I come against you and I say, be healed. That person in the hospital now, I say, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nazareth. I say be healed from every struggle. I say be healed right now. I rebuke that sickness and I declare healing over your body. That person who is in need of a job, we command doors to be open that only you can open in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Almighty God, family issue. I pray that you will intervene and let your peace reign. I pray for that person, mighty God, with that business that my God will prosper them this morning. Thank you right now for what you have done. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for showing up in a powerful and mighty way so your people can have a testimony of your awesome power. We give you praise for that lady who will play the keyboard tomorrow. That as she play, there will be no pain. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All of my worship, 10 minutes after 1 o'clock, right here 
on Love 101 FM, the family station. We're going to open the phone lines at this time. You can give us a call at 876-997-3125. That's 876. Uh, let me let me give you the stew line numbers. I'm giving you the WhatsApp numbers. So, so take the, the student line numbers. Give us a call on the student line numbers, which are 876-968-8327. Or 876-968-8328. Those are the two numbers you can reach us here in the studio. Again, they are 876-997. I keep saying the WhatsApp number, but of course, it's 876-968-8327 or 876-968-8328. I believe we lost that call. Are you there? Yes, the name of Jesus. All right, go ahead, brother Leroy. You have about thirty seconds because I know you're not you're not going to be very good, long with this. Good work. morning, Pastor Ricardo. If it's, this is Pastor Ricardo, we need to share ministry over the years. Brother French, how you do, man? Bless the name of Jesus. Listen to all the Lord share and use your powerful, see your growth. According to Colossians chapter three, verse four, we must set our affection on things above, for to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life everlasting. First Thessalonians 4 16, for the Lord Himself shall be sended from heaven with a sword, with the vice of an archangel, and a dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and may remain shall cut up. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And we thank the Almighty God to our beloved brother Roshan and the, the, the different person in, invite that is showed up to share a word to encourage us and challenge us in this month september to remember the almighty god we thank you for your son we thank you for russia we thank you for every person who called in and destroyed this rima road this logos road minister to them i pray that they will recognize and acknowledge that the greatest miracle is when a man repent of him sin for the wages of sin is death but the gift of almighty god is eternal life continue to pour back into your son pastor ricardo a man who may name share ministry in a couple of decades so thank you almighty god for what you are doing in his life in jesus christ name amen thank you so much evangelist french and all the best to you now sir god bless you sir love your record of your travel and the gravel sir blessings blessings brother friends blessings all right, uh, 968 uh, 8327. That's 876 968 8327 or 876 968 8328. Those are the numbers to speak to Pastor Ricardo Taylor right here in the studio. Doesn't matter what I go through, God is longest. Again, the numbers are 968 8327. Are nine six eight eighty three twenty eight. I will always wash. I will always wash you. But in the meantime, Pastor Ricardo Taylor, I really want you to just to give the listeners some instructions. Of course, they would have heard of the motivational word, but I want you to start thinking about, you know, what the Lord will have you to say concerning some instructions as we take the first call uh, after evangelist. Caller number two, good morning. You're live on Love 101. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? What's your name? Where you're calling from? Mr. something, Mary. Sister Mervis, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've heard you. It's, uh, it's almost months now I've not heard your voice. Yeah, that's the way it is here. Oh, my goodness. I do what the king command. All right. Go ahead quickly. I want to commend my um, Pastor Taylor for having given the word that people need to give something to God and not just get from him. Yes. Yes. That is one of our problems. This is not turning. Everybody wants the prayers to heal. Everything else. But God is saying something very strongly to the world at this time. I think he's tired of mankind's sin. And the thing I really call to say is that from the other day, I, I've been sharing this thing. A barrage of fear came on to me that I couldn't understand. And I keep questioning the Lord, what, where is this fear coming from? 
And he said the devil attached a certain amount of fear to this COVID thing. And it's like when some people get COVID, it's more the fear of fear kill them than the disease. So people have to be, be um, cautious about this kind of fear. It's pushing itself onto you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. yes, that terrible kind of fear. Yes. Because I'm not a person who go around with that kind of fear. Yes. And I just couldn't get the fear out of me. Mm-hmm. So me I said, God, what is this? Because you make me buck up two guns, man, I come from church, I see another gun, and, and no fear and nothing. And I go down the rain and I said, God, why this fear is here? Yes. And he said, there's that kind of fear that the devil attached to this COVID thing. And it's a whole heap of fear in other places. And you see other people that have blood pressure and stuff. Mm-hmm. The fear stand up the pressure. Yes, yes, yes. And mess up the, 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 the body resistance. Yes. And, 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 and all that kind of thing, sugar level, this, everything. Yes, yes. Now the thing, he told me that whether you get dengue or anything, when once a fever comes up, he tell you that there's some infection in your system. And he said, bitters. Some some bitters is very good for that kind of infection. Yes, yes, yes. I remember during during chick V, he told me to tell people to drink aloe vera water. Just wash the aloe Sister, vera. Sister Mervis, you have about thirty seconds because yes. we have to free up the line. Yes, slice it and put it in some water and just drink a little bit of it mm-hmm. each time. And I, I I got the witness from somebody who called me in Clarendon who I don't know. Yes, and told me that she saw me. Drink, um, give, giving people aloe vera water. The one who said have this um, this nerve problem. It could be coming out of strong fear too. Mm-hmm. And and I was given source of leave to drink to deal with my nerve system, nervous system. So remember that the herb is for the healing of the nation. Bless up to all of you. Amen. Thanks for calling. All worship belongs to the Lord. 968-8327. 968-8328. You're calling for prayer. No one can worship you. Hallelujah. Somebody offer it. Call a good morning. You're live on Love 101. Can you turn your radio off? Yes, yes. Good morning. Is your radio off? Turn it off, please. Thank yes, you. I turn it off now. Yes. All right. What's your name? I have, my yes. name is Pansy. Mm-hmm. Ah, Pansy. My husband is here from last week, Wednesday. I bring him to the doctor. Mm-hmm. He has this trembling. He had the fever, but it's not the COVID. I bring him to the doctor. Pastor, when I bring him to the doctor, they gave me medication for him. Um, some and some um. Uh, tonic, amino pep, and some vitamin C, and another um, um, pill tablet by the name of Inter- some like intermit something like that. And until now, he's trembling. He's having this very, very hard trembling, very, very trembling hard, and it's just me and him alone in the night is here. Pastor, when I look just a while ago, in the 12 o'clock, just I turned on the radio from around 11 o'clock. And Pastor, him stiff out on me a while ago, stiff out on me, and his tongue was twisting up in his head. And I had also call on God, because I am a child of God. He's a Christian also. And right about now, Pastor, I'm just, I don't know what to do. He sit on the bed, he move up, he get up, he just sitting, getting up and sometimes can't talk just a while ago looking as if like when somebody is not sensible yes yes i'm hearing you well listen you're I'm hearing talking. me pastor yes i'm hearing you you hear me, you hear me? yes pastor i'm hearing you now yes. and and it is just pastor i don't know what to do i i, I don't know i don't know i had was so Start praying and calling for Jesus, calling for Daddy. He's just looking as if you know he 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 he, 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 he is sensible man, very sensible, hard working. Yes. He's uh seventy seventy nine. Wow. He's seventy nine, but strong, 
and uh, and work, try to work. But when I came to the doctor, the children said he's to rest. Doctor said he's to rest. He's to rest. So me asking you, pastor, please to pray for him. Talk to him for me. Talk to him. Well, this pastor talk to you, one pastor. Talk to him, pastor. His name is David. Good night, David. Hello. Hello. David. Hello. You hearing him, Pastor? Yes, I'm hearing him, but let me say this to you. You hear you hear me? Pastor. You hear me? Listen, to, can you hear the pastor? Just listen to him. He's gonna speak to you now. Listen, all right? Oh Jesus, what is wrong here now? No, we, We're hearing you, man. You're hearing, hearing us? No, Jesus. All right. Are you hearing oh. us? All right. So what? What we're gonna? Can you hear us? Need this one, man. All right. Can you hear us? All right. I believe we lost her. What, um, what I wanted to say to her, um, Mr. Douglas, is that I'm not a physician, and if you have someone there who is sick and displaying certain um, characteristics of sicknesses or sickness. You should take them to the doctor. And as you take them to the doctor, we pray. So we don't want anyone to believe that. Well, I don't want anyone to believe. And I know the same with you that we are physicians. We are preachers and we encourage persons to go to the doctor. If they see signs of anything they don't understand, go to the doctor and let the doctor prescribe um, or diagnose whatever that problem is. As we pray. Yes? yes. That's very important to know. All right, so we have Mr. Willis on the line, but let's see if we can take caller number. Mr. Willis, are you there? Yes, sir. I hold the line, Mr. R. Go ahead, because I, I was getting another call. Well, go ahead, Mr. Willis. I'm feeling very much just and very full and feeling a lot of pain, so we're asking for prayer. Um, you, heard, you heard that, Pastor Taylor? What did Mr. Willis say? Um, I repeat what you said, sir. I'm feeling pain in my chest. I'm and feeling pain in his chest. I'm very full and very sure of arthritis, my mother. Okay, Mr. Willis. We'll pray for you, sir. Yes, sir. Bless you. Where is God? My God. I have to all right, this person has one leg. Um, repeat your name, sir. Speak to his pastor, Taylor. So, what's your name again? Remind us of your name. Yeah. All right, I believe he's listening to his radio. What he's basically saying, Pastor Taylor, is that he has one leg. And um, he need a prosthetic leg. Um, he's praying. He's praying that God will give him that breakthrough to get another leg, so he can walk on both. Amen. All right. So he's just asking for prayer. No problem. All right, so we have just about, uh, we're going to take about three more calls, starting with this one. Call a good morning. You're live on Love 101. Good morning, Brother Rasheen. Hi, this good. Is Sister Smith from Yellas. Hi, Sister Smith. What's your call about? Go ahead and speak to the man. Yes, of God. I just want to thank Pastor for prayer. I heard him praying for her because he's aware. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank him for the prayer mm -hmm. and ask that he, he, he continues to pray, pray for her. Amen. Amen. We will do. We will do, my sister. All right. Thanks for calling. All right. Okay, okay, brother Rashid. All right. Bless you. Let's take another call. Call a good morning. You're live on Love 101. Hello. Good night. Hi. Good night. What's your name? It's Edna. Hi, Edna. Go ahead. Um, I just listened to the lady that called about her husband. I'm so sympathetic with her. Um, I was wondering if your husband is out to get an heart attack or something. Um, we we don't know exactly what the the issue is as we were meant as we were saying that um I think it's best I know it's late now and um you know but it's best if we she consults a doctor in terms of um what the situation is rather than to have him there and not um addressing the issue or trying to call for emergency 
Um, yeah, I so, guess you might call for emergency. If she have any cayenne pepper at home, she could give him a little until she reaches the hospital. Well, I, I'm not a doctor, so I can't give a recommendation. We can hold it oh. for the best. We can pray. We're going to pray for them. We're going to definitely yeah. pray so that God will give them the provision to go. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. as Miss Murphy said a while ago about um, the COVID, mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm totally agree with her. And you know that fear is going to kill off the people there, even more than the COVID. I say to, to people all the while, mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. is just getting this fear, you know. It, yes. It's not easy because even my daughter called me from Canada yesterday and she was like, she said she, she, she wants to go into panic attack and stuff like that. I have to be encouraging her. And she said um, she don't really listen to the news, but her husband keep in touch with, with our news here. Mm -hmm. I tell her if she cannot stand to watch the news, she do not watch it. Because even me, myself, um, the spirit said to me, say, you know what? Forget about this COVID thing. Just forget about it. Do not let it stress you, stress you out. If you can't take the news, do not watch the news any at all. Just, you know, set it around, but follow the protocol, but do not watch the news if you cannot. You know, because mm. it's, it's kind of stressful. Yes, 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 yes. Well, they can go into the word, which is the good news. You can always exactly, get good news yeah. from the word of God. I will refer to um, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Mm -hmm. He will keep them in perfect peace whose man is paid on him because they trust in him. That's right. That's yeah, right. do we have to, the word we have to use now, not the word. Just use the word because the enemy is out there and that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants us to get confused that we will forget about God, but we can't afford to let that happen. Amen. Amen. I like that. Thanks for calling, yeah. Sister Edna, and God bless you for calling. You're right? welcome, Rashi. You're welcome. All right. Bless you, my sister. All right. So, Pastor Taylor, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, I would love for you to just to give the, the listeners some instructions before you go. Uh, we're trying to keep things concise this morning. And of course, just before you, I don't know how you're going to do it, if you're going to pray first or you're mm -hmm. going to release some instructions to the listeners. Well, let's take the final call. I'm seeing another call coming in. I, I keep saying the final call, but we're trying to cut mm -hmm. things early this morning. Caller, good morning. You're live on Love 101. Hello, good morning. All right, so I believe that person is not there. So... All right, so just before, so tell me what you're, you're, you want to do. You want to s release the instructions first? Let me pray first. All I right, go. First and then... Okay, go ahead. Okay, Father, we thank you right now for, again for the prayer request. We pray for that gentleman who is showing signs of whether it's heart attack or whatever, stroke, that even though you're touching, touch him and cover him and let your healing virtue flow upon him as they take him to the doctor. Father, in the, that gentleman who wants that prosthetic leg, I pray now in the name of Jesus that we give him favor. Favor. We come against the fear that is in our society. You did not give us a spirit of fear, but let the peace of God rest upon us. We place every prayer request before you right now. Those who could not call us, sending their WhatsApp to, to lodge their prayer requests, we place it before you. You are the all knowing God. And again, we pray for my sister, my friend, who is presently in the hospital. And even now your angels will be dispatched and healing will be administered to her body. I declare that she will not die, but live and declare. We come against every spirit of death. We bind and cancel it. And we declare over every person watching and listening that no untimely death will be a portion. You will walk in faith and not in fear. You will have a testimony about your situation. The enemy meant it for bad, but God is going to turn it around for your good. In Jesus' name, amen. The instruction that I want to leave with us um, this morning comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, etc. I want to challenge all of us, whether you are Christians or not, to ensure that the fruit of the Spirit is evident in your life. That's the instruction I want to give us. Love who you need to love. Forgive who you need to forgive. Be patient with those you need to be patient with. Because the Bible said, it's not by their tongues, it's not by their prophecy, but it's by the fruit that you will know them. 
And so my instruction to all of us, again, is to ensure that the food of the Spirit is evident in our life, because that is what God is going to use to measure whether or not we are right with him or not. And that's my instruction. Whatever you need to do, get it right. Forgive, love who you need to love, forgive who you need to forgive, all the bitterness and the anger, get rid of that. And let love reign in your heart, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> amen and amen. Of course, just before you go, just want to, is there anybody you'd like to shout out before you go? Uh, yes, yes, guess what? <laughs> it's, it's, it's Today is um, Kareem Ma Morgan, let me speak properly, Kareem Morgan's birthday, Sister Anne, all the way up there in Redditch, where she's close to where you were. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Yeah, man, close to where you were. Today is her birthday. I nice. don't even know how old she is or how young she is, but we want to wish her a happy birthday. And I'm seeing some of my family as a Janet Knight, all the way from England, you know, sir. What do you say? From the Facebook. Yeah, Janet Knight has joined us as a sister Harriet, sister Mighty, who called in, mm -hmm. is a member of, of our church. Um, sister Dawn, she also called earlier. And so I just want to give up all the Changing Our World Ministry members, partners, friends, and well wishers. We love you. Know. Love you know. and thank you, Roshin, for inviting me. I really, really appreciate it. Not a problem. Always a pleasure having you on board as well. And of course, looking forward to connecting with you sometime in the future. You may never know. I'm always honored to have you on. Uh, we're coming from far, as they would say. I remember as early as 2016 when I just started on radio. That's how far um, we're coming from. And I really give mm -hmm. God thanks for that. I always remember Pastor Taylor when my son, you know, he came in 2016 too. Yeah, 2016. The same year I started working at another radio station. I remember my son came prematurely at uh, yeah. 28 weeks. He was about six, I think six months, two weeks when he came on this earth. So we had some struggles. We had to rush him in and out of the hospital. I remember he was at Jubilee Hospital for about six weeks. We took him home, had him home, had him for about about three days. They had to rush him into the Spanish Donna Hospital. We were there for another two weeks. And I remembered we had him for another week at home. And then we had to rush him into Children's Hospital where he was there for another almost two weeks again. I remembered that um, it was December um, when you came to visit me in the hospital at Children's Hospital. You came and visit my wife and uh, my son. Um, and he's doing well now. He's doing extremely well. If you look at him, you would even know that he was a premature baby. Uh, and <laughs> we, we, I, I saw, I saw you him at a church. You know, which church we're talking. Okay, yes. And and, and you were trying. I guess you were trying to get him to sit still. And it, Mr. the boy, I fight you off. Lord <laughs> Jesus. And I was like, look, look, look at that. Yeah. You know? That's, but God is amazing, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is. That is amazing. He that is. is amazing. So sometimes but we could be from four, eh? Four, yeah. Four, 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 four. Definitely. Four. <laughs> Definitely. And I will never leave you behind. Wherever I go, I will always take you with me, my brother, because of course it's always a blessing connecting with you. Um, it's yeah. a blessing connecting with your ministry. And I always remember your 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 um uh, what you call it, your uh your members. Um, Deacon, you're talking about Deaconess Johnson, yeah? Yes, man. All I don't see her on, I guess. I don't know if she's on, I'm listening. But tell her, tell her I said hello. Tell her I said hello. Charmaine, Charmaine right? Yeah, yeah, yes, you're right. Yes, yeah, man. Yeah, tell her I said yeah. hello. It's been a while since I've seen her, um, mm -hmm. heard from her. But tell her I still remember her. And um, it's always a blessing um, connecting with your ministry. Looking forward to connecting soon. Hopefully things will get back to normal again sometime mm -hmm. soon. We can start having church, you know. It's been a while uh, since I visited oh your church. God. You're still in um um tell them the name of your church before you go. Um where so they oh they can get in contact with your ministry if they um if the, if there's a is there if there is a call line they can call your ministry and so mm -hmm. on. Um you can go ahead and share that as well. And of course the social media handles as well. Okay, so it's changing your world ministry. We're located in Pembrokeal. Um um 18 to 20 Chincona Avenue. We're right next, easy to find. We're right next to the Member of Parliament's office. That's Dr. Nigel's, Nigel Clark's office. That's where we are. What, what do you um, say? 
Yes, man. You're near to so the finance. So, oh, the finance. Lord, I, don't know. I don't know if I can go over there and get some finance for the church. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are on Facebook, Changing Your World Ministry. Um, I think that's it. I'm not really up to too much into social media like that. Yet. So we're not on Twitter and, or, or anything. Yet, but we're on Facebook. Yeah. Um, when you go on Facebook, you can get information regarding, you know, telephone number, etc., cetera, et cetera. All right. Blessings. And thank you so much yes. again, Pastor Ricardo Taylor. Say hi to your wife, Natoya Taylor, as well. Yes. And, yes, all, and all your church members of the Changing Your World Ministry. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Pastor Taylor. And we'll talk very, very soon. Walk good now and take care of yourself, sir. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right. So sweet to trust in Jesus and just just to take in my his word and just just tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. This is where we pull things down on Facebook and on YouTube. We do want to thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being on board. Blessings to you in abundance. You're tuned to Love 101 FM, the family station, located right here at 81 Hagley Park Road, Kingston 10, Jamaica. You just heard uh, MPIAW, Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. My guest was Pastor Ricardo Taylor of the Changing Your World Ministry. How I, how I. where many things are the same stand out with unique pieces customized just for you in a world where many things are the same stand out with unique pieces customized just for you perfect tees 876 specializes in personalized t-shirts tumblers hats wine glasses champagne flutes and so much more customize any product for your youth group work group family or event follow us on instagram at perfect tees 876 that's p-e-r-f-e-c-t-e-e-s 876 or whatsapp us at 876-453-9394 perfect tees 876 the home of customization
We're on the final leg of the Love FM's I Love Summer Tour for 2021. And we're now approaching our very last stop, the corporate area of Kingston and St. Andrew. We arrive this Sunday, September 12th, for our week-long journey through the municipality, beginning with a worship service at the Olson Memorial Church of God, located at 35 Hope Road in Kingston. The host, pastor, and speaker is Reverend Adonair Jones, Executive Chairman of the Church of God in Jamaica and Chairman of the National Religious Media Commission, owners and operators of Love 101 FM and Love Television. The service will incorporate the annual Back to School Church event in which students will be participating from the Arden High School, Arden Preparatory and Extension High School, and Arden Preparatory in Mandeville. And, of course, Love with them's very own youth ambassador, Shavodi Blair, will also be in attendance. The service will be carried live on the family station, Love 101 FM, and on our social media pages this Sunday, September 12th at 11 a.m. That's the I Love Summer Church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. It promises to be one you don't want to miss. I Love Summer. It's time to explore. Come on, put your hands together. You are Alpha and Omega. Thank you for your presence. We worship you, our Lord. Whew. Somebody throw your hands up in the air and tell them, You are worthy to. We pray. We give you all the glory. Woo! We worship you, our Lord. You are the to be praised. I need every worshiper to open your mouth and tell him we give you come on. To be praised, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, y'all, we're standing in the glory. We're standing in the presence of God. I need every worshiper to lift your, lift up your voices and say something to Him. What a mighty God we serve. your dwelling place is it your is this your prayer i want to put a smile on your face so what i praise it say heart here oh, and i praise it i'll do it again like to you here's my worship smile 
Here's my life, Lord. Smile. Somebody raise that up. Say, Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Smile. Every voice, just a few moments. Say, Here's my life, Lord. Come on, raise it up. Say, Here's my worship. Say, Here's my worship. Somebody say, here's my life, Lord. You won't let me down. I'm going to move, y'all. You won't break my heart. You won't let me fall. So what? So I give it to you. (laughs) Say, you won't let me down. Say, you won't break my heart. Won't break my heart. Tell him you won't let me fall. You won't let me fall. So what you gonna do? Say, so I get it to you. Wait, you wanna say you won't let me down. You won't break my heart. You won't let me fall. I give it to you. Now please in my Heart to you, oh, no. I present my last time. Say, life to you. Wanna be where you are? Gotta be where you are. Can we do it together? Say, wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. So, Lord, if I find favor in your sight, somebody ask him, say, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. Come on, say it. I'm desperately to be where you are across the hottest desert come on army of the lord say i'll travel near or far say for your glory for your glory tell him i will do i will do To be called you as, to be called you as, my King. Sing for your glory, for your glory. Tell them I will do, I will do.
Oh, you ought to tell him, say, here's my cup. Fill it up. And make me whole. Somebody lift your hands. God, fill us again in your presence. Come on. Lift your hands and ask him, fill me again in your presence. Come on. Somebody ask him, fill me with more of your power, more of your strength, more of your joy. That's what I sense in the room. Somebody just came to be filled tonight. Somebody, grab him. See me, see your life. You say, feel me up, God. Feel me up. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. One more time, say, feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Somebody clap your hands and raise up your voices. There's a miracle in this room. I feel it in the room tonight with my name on. I tell you, put your name in the atmosphere, Natasha, Tamika Cobbs. I don't want my angels to get confused. Put your whole name out there. Does it hear? 